Welcome back, everybody. Sports Federation TV. And as you know, and as I've uh, said earlier on the show, the sport that looks after the sports federations and districts in the Western Cape across the board. So I think we've got about 175, 176 federations in the Western Cape. That's, of course, if you consider the fact that you have the Cape Town District, which is the old Western province with many, many provinces, a, a federation, about 65 to 70 federations in uh, the Cape Town area, such as Western Province Rugby and South of Cape Town and Western Province or... Uh, Cape Town softball and, and many, many sports. And then, of course, you've got federations in the Eden area, in the Central Karoo area, the Overberg area, the West Coast, Cape Winelands, all federations. If you add them all up together, there's about 170. And then there's the provincial federations, the, the actual province, the Western Cape province, which is what this badge is all about, the Western Cape Provincial Sport Confederation badge, the official colors. With me now is Dylan Tommy, the uh, president of Life Saving South Africa. Dylan? Welcome to uh, Sport Federation TV. Welcome back, should I say. Yeah, thanks. Great to be here again. So the last time we spoke about life saving, we spoke quite a lot about the progress that you'd made as a federation during the year. And you spoke a lot about uh, the fact that you managed to get new sponsors. You spoke about your administrative skills. It looks like this is all paid off now. So I've got to say, congratulations. You are the federation of mm -hmm. the year. Yeah, no, thanks. Um, 2017 has been a great year, um, like you mentioned. Um, part of the award is related to administration and good governance and financial management. So it just says that we're on the right track when it comes to that. And then another part of the award is um, our development plans and our school program. Um, so with that, we've done a lot of work during 2017. Um, not only de developing the sport within the school structures or, or promoting the sport, but was also on the water safety side. Yeah. Um, as you know, life-saving is not just a sport. There's the drowning prevention and the life-saving yeah. side of it. So we've gone around to over 100 schools um, teaching grade fours about water safety because it's part of their curriculum. Um, yeah. So we've had facilitators or trained lifeguards go to schools and then give a, a lesson on water safety and how to be safe. Was this part of a submission? Or, or I mean, how did you get to this point? Because um, we know that a lot of the federations have to first be recognized at a district level then they have to be recognized at a provincial level and they have to be recognized at a national level um what was all of this i mean how did it get to this point look in to qualify for fed national federation of the year you need to be a recognized federation within south africa so you need to be affiliated to sascock and recognized with the department of sport and then like i said um, they look at certain criteria so you need to submit quarterly reports and annual reports to them and then they look at your, your administration, your governance. Yeah. Are you reporting on the funds they're providing and you're accurately reporting on that? And then you also need to submit a development plan, especially for school sport. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so then I think they go through that and then based on what you present to them, they then decide which federations are shortlisted. And then obviously this past Sunday we were announced as the winners. How did it feel? Look, it was, and we were first up, so yeah. got there and then boom, you're on. Um, it, wa it was a really proud moment, and like I said on Sunday, um, I think the award is not just for the administrators of the organization, but for every single volunteer lifeguard we have in the country. Um, it's the start of the summer season, and especially in the Western Cape with the drought we're having, and many of the pools in Cape Town are closed, going to be closed. Yeah. So we're expecting a lot more people to go down to the beach, beach because yeah. we're expecting a hot summer as well. So I think we're looking at, to aid for a tough summer for our lifeguards. And I think you mentioned earlier also, yes, there are pro lifeguards in many parts of the country, including Cape Town. But the vast majority of lifeguards that you interact with volunteers. On a, as volunteers. Volunteers yeah. come so to the beach and they up early in the morning all the way to the end telling people. So I think this award actually is, is recognition for, for the hours that they put in because that same guys are sitting on the beach, are competing in the sport and are going around to schools, keeping kids, um, you know, creating the awareness, yeah. trying to keep kids. Um, I tried to get one or two of our guys on the show, and they're busy coaching youngsters this evening. They're busy. So at the, as yeah. we speak, they're busy out yeah. there. Yeah. Coaching, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, having said that, I mean, you're, you're being very gracious here because you're not t talking about the credit. Obviously, we know that because you're from the Western Cape, we produce the best administrators. administrators. <laughs> you know, the, so yeah. I, I like that. You know, we've got to make sure that the rest of the world knows that the Federation, because... I mean, we, we, so we know that from a confederation perspective, we're doing a great job because we're producing um, these talented administrators, um, such as Mzi, who is the 
President, uh, Chairperson of Western Cape Life yeah, Saving. He's right? the, the, the newly elected Chairperson of the Western yeah. Cape Life Saving. Yeah. But let yeah. me go back a step. Sorry, I, I, I sort of interrupted you because one of the things that, that, that would not have been happened, would not have been possible, and I think this is what you, what you said there is about governance, making sure that you sub submit the reports on your funding. Government wants to know, uh, Confederation, SASCOC and so on, want to know that the money you got was spent in the right place. Now, yourself as the, as the president of Life Saving South Africa, you need to make sure you've got a good administrative team behind you because if those documents were never submitted, you wouldn't be standing with that trophy right now. Yeah, no, definitely. So look, in terms of our structure, like most sports federations, there is a district level and um, they report to us. We require certain financial documents from them. So even at that level where they get funding from municipal level and, and, and the Cape Town Sports Confederation, up to provincial level then at the national level i have a board and we have a director of finance a volunteer sitting on that board and we ev at, on a quarterly basis get financial reports which we discuss and look at and make sure we're on track and, and spending it in the right places but we we we're fortunate enough to have a small staff um, based in the office in durban yeah. uh, which is um, managed by a lady helen herbert and i think a lot of the credit goes to them because they make sure everything's submitted on time. You always have that one person that's yeah. they good at it. That, yeah. That's their and, baby. And they chase up the, the clubs and make sure things are, are pre, uh, re, you know, reported to yeah. in, in terms of the club from the clubs that are required to go to, to the Department of Sport and SASCOC. So they they play a key role in the, in, the, in the administration side. And then, like I said, we've got a board that looks at good governance. I have on the board, we have a legal person sitting there and make sure we, you know, follow in the constitution. But don't you think that that's one time, some of the, one of the problems that we have in, in some sports organization is that the administrators are elected as opposed to maybe recruited for their skills? Because it's very hard when you have an elected official and you don't necessarily know, are they a good secretary? Are they a good treasurer? Mm -hmm. Because it's an elected position. They might know nothing about finance or nothing about secretarial skills. You have to be able to appoint someone, which you've mm. clearly done, which shows us the, the type of initiative that you've taken. And I mean, I don't mean to blow hot air here for you, but it was, it's with, we, we need to kind of zone in on the key things that makes an organization good. And yeah, you've just won that mm. accolade f specifically because you've done things right. And I think a lot of federations can take advice from you. Yeah, so in terms of structure, we've set up the organization sort of like a company. So there's a board and there's non-executive directors on the board so they the, they they elected no portfolio they based on the part of the organization they have years of experience yeah. but then we've also created specific portfolios that look after specific areas within the organization give us an example so the one is finance, finance. so it's an elected position but the person has to have financial experience and you know come from the financial world with us, because of the nature of our organization, we then have a director for sport that just looks after the sport and the complete package, high performance, grassroots and yeah, all that. Yeah. We have a director that looks after the life-saving qualifications of lifeguards, making sure that duties happen and things like that. And then our third leg is drowning prevention. So that's the person that's making sure the awareness campaigns are going out. And in that also, we, we will be hosting a conference in 2019, the World Conference on Drowning Prevention in Durban. Yeah, in South Africa. In okay, South Africa, yeah. It's the first time yeah. it's going to be hosted yeah, yeah. in South Africa. So we've set up that structure, and I think we're fortunate that even with our elected officials, our members or the council that elects um, the national board, understand the need to have certain skills on that board. Yeah. So even within that five elected members who don't have a specific portfolio there's a legal person there there's a governance person there and did you did you give them where before they were elected did you give people to an opportunity to, to look back at their background uh, uh, their skill set yeah so when you get nominated by uh, a province because yeah. you have to be nominated a cv needs to be presented on your life saving related background or history and then your professional experience as well and then based on that, then the rest of the council will elect people into position. But as a board, we then also per year co-op members uh, to assist with various functions. And also as part of our succession planning, we bring people on to gain experience of how the big picture, you know, sometimes when you operate in a club or a district, you only focus on that and you don't understand what needs to happen on a national level. So we give them that big picture experience so that when they go back, they understand <coughs> Our things need so to there's work. absolutely no truth in the rumor that you must look, in a, look good in a speedo before. 
<laughs> no, I don't. I think you must come and have a look at our board. Some of them probably did look good in a speedo 40, 50 years ago, but I don't think they can fit in one right now. Yeah. Not everything's Baywatch. No, no. Not no. everything's Baywatch. Yeah, to to run. I mean, any organisation. In fact, you probably hardly how every, how often do you even get down to the beach? Uh, yeah, look, I'm away at meetings yeah. most weekends. Yeah, my point. Um, yeah. And when I get down to a beach or a club, it's, you know, people want to chat and yeah. know things and ask questions. And when you're going to do this there's and no why is this frolicking. happening? Yeah, so there's no time, there's no time for Listen, I've got to move into another dimension of what I think it is that made you guys so successful this year. It was in this year, 2017, that you struck the relationship with Treble, the uh, sports management company. Um, and at the more or less at the same time, you guys have got yourself a big sponsor, I think, in General Motors. General uh, Tires. General Tires. General Motors would have been another <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wouldn't we all want that sponsor? Um, General Tires. So you, you, you've, you've tied together the sports management component in another way where you, maybe, the, is it true to say that the organization realized that you need a professional organization yeah. to handle sports sponsorship, commercialization, management? Yeah, look, just before we sort of accidentally netted the current sponsor, we were doing our own thing, you know, trying to approach sponsors and whatever. But that's the one area that I think most sports federations lack is that sports sponsorship marketing yeah. person. Um, so we, the, we have a relationship with the MD of Treble. He's an ex-lifeguard. Um, and because of that, Carl Nell. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. because of that, we've, we've, we've had an ad hoc relationship. We tried to assist, but nothing formal. So I think a month or two prior to, a few months prior to us meeting um, the marketing manager from Continental, we signed an official contract with Treble and said, look, you handle all the sponsorship fundraising um, uh, side of things. So if they had found a sponsor, if they find a sponsor, they, if they work on a commission basis yeah, or whatever, yeah. or they sign an agreement with a particular sponsor mm. to market the sponsorship. And then... Mm, um, the marketing manager of Continental at the time, Neil um, Langner, and I met accidentally. I put him in touch with Carl, and then the rest is kind of history. We yeah. signed a three-year, first year was 5.2 million contract. All of a sudden, the organization knows that somebody is looking after the needs of that sponsor. They are looking after the admin side of things. They're making sure the activations are right, the leverage is right, the messaging is right, the brand position is right. Everything is happening that, that, that you now know. You don't have to worry about palming that off to somebody in the office who's just maybe doing the best they can with mm. a newsletter. Yeah, look, because the rest of us are sport administrators and we focus in on the sport or whatever. Yeah. And you need experts to do the marketing and things. And based on what, what we've achieved through Treble, um, because we've been, they do media tracking um, as well. Yeah. Within the first three, four months of the sponsorship, although General Tire put in 5.2 million, the marketing return in the first four months was 6.1 million. Yeah. So just by treble marketing and managing the thing correctly, um, our national championships were live streamed. It went on to Supersport and various other news agencies. We've managed to sign a deal with um, News 24, Sport 24. We have a designated page on there. Yeah. So all those things are getting the life-saving brand out there besides the sponsor. Now it's getting the life-saving brand. I'm beginning to think you've got a designated slot on this show. <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like it. And what's happening now is our membership is increasing exponentially. Yeah, but isn't that fantastic? Um, that's our the kind clubs, of problem yeah, you want. That's the problem you want. Yeah, yeah. I've had actually in the last week two clubs based here in Cape Town so and they're struggling to cope with the numbers. They needing to approach. They don't have the enough space. space the clubs don't have enough space. And they need to so uh, either add on to their current f facility, yeah. or they're going to have to turn people. So away. if there's any folks from the city of Cape Town yeah. watching now, or around the Western Cape, uh, Life Saving South Africa, the, the, the federation. If you're watching, get a, get in touch with us, or get in touch with with um, Ziva, president of uh, or chairperson of Western Cape Life Saving. The lifesavers need more space. There are enough lifesavers that put up their hand and say, we want to become a lifesaver. So if, if you are watching, you need facilities, we're going to try and put that together for you. Um, so you, you're going back to what you were saying, the, the, the administrative side, the combination, uh, that together with an organization or a company who's, who's professional at running sports makes a difference because uh, the one thing triggers the next. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm put a feather in your cap now. Uh, you were at one SASCOG meeting actually and you spoke to the national federations about how you need to market. And just before you actually did that talk, we had already in-house started on our own 
a social media campaign and how do we get ourselves on TV and out there in the media. And that's where the contract with Treble came about. So we started our own in-house social media and now we run it in-house and in conjunction with Treble. So when major events are happening, not only sporting events, but within the life-saving frame, if there's an international day of the volunteer or whatever, we build a whole social media campaign around that. So I think federations, if they want to get to a position where you're attracting sponsors and you're attracting people into your organization, you need to follow the advice of JP. It's <laughs> get your social media plan right, get you know the, the structures right also, obviously administratively. Yeah. You don't want to be in the news for all the wrong reasons, which sport often is. Um, misadministration, etc. Get your house in order, do things right, and then do the marketing behind that correctly. And if you don't have the expertise in house, find experts to do it for you. And that applies club level, federate, provincial level, national level, it's across the board. Definitely, because yeah. your whole organization needs to go in one direction. You mm -hmm. can't have clubs, because at a national level, and, and that's the message I preach to our clubs. They, the, they have the stories. We are a bunch of guys that meet occasionally in the office. We don't have the stories. And to sell your organization, you need the stories. So the clubs need to generate the social media content or the content that Sports Federation TV wants to put on TV. But now, if I just look at it from another side, a lot of people often ask the question, what, does the, what is the job of a president? What does the president do now? You and I are both presidents. But it's, it's your job really to make sure that everybody is moving in one direction. Because that's the thing that can break you is if it just takes one person to be moving the other direction and that breaks down your, your I mean, you, you're obviously always stronger as a unified organization. Look, I think uh, a president does play a very important role. Um, it's keeping everyone together and, and singing off the same hymn sheet, so to say, and making sure that you, 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 you own in on your strategic objectives, whatever objectives the organization has set for itself. And if your president can't keep that unity and keep everyone going the same way, then your organization is going to struggle. So, yeah, it's been a, a, a struggle to get to where we were. I mean, I was called in about six, seven years ago when the organization was really struggling. And um, I've managed to bring everyone together to get everyone to see the big picture and where we need to go. And, and it's paid off. Well, I was going to ask you, well, let's go the other way. What would you say as president? Because this organization would not have won this award without your leadership. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's common sense. So what would you say is your biggest challenge? Because you've ticked all the boxes to make it successful, but obviously you can't let your guard down. Because mm. So what would you say is your biggest challenge going forward? Look, it's, it's constantly making sure that every box is ticked making sure everybody is, is on a positive and, and moving in that forward direction because it just takes one small little negative space, club, person, energy um, to, to corrupt the whole organization and then you need to start everything over. Because <laughs> if, you your yeah, <laughs> if your sponsor is looking at you and how positive your organization yeah. is and you come down to the beach or wherever, the track if you're in cycling or the field, and you have one or two people saying to the sponsor, but why are you doing this? Or you should be doing this and don't. The sponsor is going to turn around and look like, I thought I'm involved with this unified, nice, you know, positive organization. And then it just takes one person to, you know, to cause it. So it's constantly making sure as president, I'm on top of everything. If there's an issue at that club, make sure I know that it, what's happening. How do we need to solve it? Who do I put in place to solve it? Um, and that kind of thing. So it's it's a constant, um, you know, everyday thing. You yeah. can't be an administrator weekends only. And yes, I do have a full-time job. So I, I fit this in after hours and wherever You're I can. You're, of course, in the education space. You're yeah, I'm a a currently an acting, acting principal at a school, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's become a lot tougher. Well, the kids must be very proud of you. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of comments. I, I got which, to school on Monday. Are we allowed to say which school? Yeah, I get, I'm at Gardens Commercial High School Gardens in Cape Town. Yeah. And when I got to school on Monday, uh, a few of the kids were saying, "You were everybody, all the learners um, on their social media pages and yeah. their statuses on WhatsApp, you were featured. Well, overnight, you're a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're on national TV and I think in front of 20 million viewers on SABC. Uh, and you were first up. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Dylan, listen, I've got it. First of all, let me just stretch over. I'd like to see the trophy. Congratulations, first of all. Okay. All right, Major. there we go. There, there we go, folks. Uh, Wow. All right. So this was the trophy, the National Federation Trophy of the Year. Darlin, we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to, I'm going to keep the trophy with <laughs> me. I'm going to say thanks for joining me on Federation TV. It's been pleasure. a pleasure having you. 
we always talk so i mean 20 minutes went over just like that and uh, you know really congratulations i really hope that that uh that you're aware of the fact just how much we appreciate having administrators like you around because we don't get them often like you need to know that and well, i hope people actually do come and pat you on the back enough for that folks i've got the trophy now <laughs> uh, not for federation of the year there was dylan tommy from life saving south africa joining me here on the show and uh, folks, really, this is the kind of thing that we want our administrators to 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 strive for. The Life Saving South Africa 2017 South African Sports Awards National Federation of the Year. Uh, this is Sports Federation TV. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Have a fantastic sporting weekend. Bye-bye.